News from the great state of Michigan tonight, where we have been reporting on a drive to overturn one of the most radical new laws in the country. In its current form, the one passed by Republicans last year, Michigan's emergency manager law lets the state take over cities and school districts. The state overrules the choices made by local elections and instead hands authority over to a single unelected overseer who gets unilateral control. An emergency manager can sell off the town's property, can cancel the contracts, they can move to dissolve the town. They get to say how much power the local elected officials retain. If an emergency manager wants, he or she can take that power, can take all the power from local elected officials, and never mind who the voters pick to represent them. Democracy does not apply at the local level. But democracy, it turns out, is hard to give up. Opponents of the law organized a petition drive to put the law on the ballot for a citizen's repeal in Michigan. In February, they delivered their petitions to the state, saying that they turned in more than enough signatures to get the referendum on the November ballot. Last week, another group challenged those petitions. Their top objection was that the font on the petitions themselves is a hair too small. And so no matter how many Michiganders sign those petitions to get rid of the emergency manager thing, they say the Board of State canvassers must throw all the petitions out based on font size. The group that is so outraged by the font size is the project of a Republican consulting firm. The font size challengers have the same address and the same phone number as the Republican firm. The firm's senior counsel is the spokesman for the your font size is too small effort. One of the three partners in that firm, hey, look at that, one of the three partners in the firm also serves on the board of state canvassers. That's the board who gets to make the decision on this. He gets to make the decision about the font size challenge being brought by the group that lives inside his office. He is both the pitcher throwing the baseball and the umpire saying whether or not that pitch was a ball or a strike. And he has not said whether he will step aside or whether he will stay in the game and play both roles. Michigan state law says it's his choice to make. But wait, there's more. Turns out it's not just that one guy and that one guy's problem. Oh, Michigan, you are amazing. Uh, it turns out there is another member of that same board who has exactly the same kind of problem. Another one of the four people on this board works as the political coordinator for a Michigan union. A Michigan union that has a petition drive going for a referendum on union rights. Before collecting signatures, her union asked the Board of State canvassers, including their own political coordinator who sits on that board, to approve their petition. And when they did that in March, the union's political coordinator voted for her own union's petition. She joined the other three board members in approving the petition. She stayed in the game as pitcher and umpire, just as so far the Republican guy has too on the emergency manager thing. And she says it's okay. The union rep, the Democrat in this case, she says it's okay because the four-member board is supposed to be made of partisan. She says, quote, what makes the system fair is that it takes three votes on the board of canvassers to do anything. So why not step aside and let the other three people who don't have a conflict of interest vote on this? Because everybody on the board could have a conflict of interest that somehow makes all of the conflicts okay? This is seriously how Michigan is handling its democracy? in order to get something voted on, on the left or the right. You have to run this gauntlet where the deciders, the gatekeepers, all have huge direct conflicts of interest, but we've decided that nobody cares about that? My favorite part about covering what's going on in Michigan right now is all the scolding we get from the Michigan press about us reporting on things that are shocking and backward and anti-democratic in Michigan, but that they say we should not report on nationally because in Michigan, they don't care about it. <laughs> we keep getting all of this pushback from Michigan press. Ah, back off. In Michigan, we don't care about this stuff. We don't see it as all that bad. Why don't you see it as all that bad? This week, a former emergency manager in Michigan spoke out about the way the state of Michigan is running things these days. Michael Stampfler is his name. He was the second emergency manager assigned to the city of Pontiac. Governor Rick Snyder replaced him in September. In part, the Snyder administration tells us because as emergency manager, Mr. Stampfler recommended giving the city of Pontiac to the county, essentially letting go of Pontiac, having it just become a place in Oakland County. 
after having been an emergency manager, after having been willing to essentially dissolve the city he was put in charge of? Michael Stampler, this guy, is now blowing the whistle on the law that empowered him to do all that. He now says, quote, I do not believe emergency managers can be successful. They abrogate the civic structure of the community for a period of years, then return it virtually dismantled for the community to attempt to somehow make a go of it. A guy who's been there, who has been put in unilateral control of an American city, says putting someone in unilateral control of an American city doesn't exactly prepare that city for good governance and for standing on its own two feet in the future. Yeah, right, right? Mr. Sampler is planning on giving his whistleblower speech on Michigan's radical emergency manager law next week at a Rotary Club in Wyandotte, which is just south of Detroit. As much as it apparently infuriates the press in Michigan for us to be the ones saying it, it seems like this whistleblower guy might be important for a state trying to figure out how its democracy went all cockeyed. Provided, of course, that you care if your democracy in your state has gone all cockeyed.